Welcome back, everybody. Your host, Johnny K. Picks here. Going to break down this card for UFC Austin, Dariush versus Sarukian. Now, I know it's been a week, but don't forget, always hit that like button for me. If you're new to the channel or if you just haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe right now. Turn on those notifications and leave some comments below on your favorite fights this weekend, how you did a couple weeks ago, what fights you're looking forward to, all that good stuff helps out these videos a ton and i appreciate every one of you doing that as well so it's like i said it's been a couple weeks since the last event i did fairly well i did uh 10 3 and 1 on my picks and for my bets i won plus 3.54 units profit so we'll go over that real quick i'm not going to get too crazy into it because it's been a couple weeks like i said i'm so i'm sure everybody wants to move on but here's my bets the only ones I missed on was Jordan Levitt, Uros Medic, who did not look good at all, and um, the Alexander craziness where he got knocked out. Other than that, I won every bet. Like I said, all my parlays hit. Uh, I thought I did pretty well, I'll say. 3.54 units profit there. We're going to keep this momentum train moving. But first, before that, I already have a few bets on my Patreon already. So if you don't know about my Patreon, here it is. It is $5.99 a month. You get access to all of my bets, whether it's UFC, NFL, NBA, all that good stuff. I post those on the daily. They're not, I, I just do like a certain handful of bets. So it could be a little bit of NBA mixed in one day, a little bit of football, stuff like that. So mainly though, I do UFC and MMA every week. I will always do that. I already have three bets posted. So go ahead and uh, join that right now. You get early access to all my picks and predictions for the future UFC events, usually one or two events out. And also, which is Patreon exclusive, you get my Johnny K Picks UFC Cheat Cheat, which has all of the parlay pieces that I look at, all of the single bets that I look at, and any long shot or sprinkle bets mixed in there if you like that kind of stuff too. I always post it for every card. So you definitely, that pays for the $5.99 a month in itself. So Let's go right into these fights that I'm looking forward to because a lot of these fights are very good. So like I said, UFC Austin, uh, Dariush versus Sarukian. Let's go down to the bottom here. I believe the only fights that kind of like um, needed replacement was um, Dan Hooker versus Bobby Green. Hooker just got out last minute. And then the Khalil Roundtree fight just happened. Like, I think it was a day because I was going to pick Khalil Roundtree, but I guess that just uh, randomly got off that one, too. So let's jump to the first one here. Jamie Lynn Horth versus Veronica Hardy. Horth is 6 and 0, 33 years old, 5'7", 67 inch reach. And Hardy is 7, 4, and 1, 28 years old, 5'4", with a 64 inch reach. So Horth has a uh, solid striking. She's got some power in her hands as well on the feet. Decent takedown defense. Uh, she's coming down to flyweight. She's normally a bantamweight, so this is going to be her first fight, I believe, at flyweight, unless it was earlier in her career. Uh, let me just look real quick. I don't want to lie to you. Uh, she did, okay, earlier in her career, when she first started out her professional career, she was at flyweight. Um, so she has been at flyweight at um, in her beginning, but she's moving down because she was at bantamweight. Um, so for Hardy, solid uh, striking as well. She's got quick hands. She doesn't really have that knockout power, though. Um, she likes to push forward. She's got good takedowns and wrestling and good BJJ, good top control on top, as we saw in her last fight against Juliana Miller. She was able to defend all of uh, Miller's take uh, submissions when she was off her back and all the good, and she looked good. So this is going to be an interesting fight here, but I'm going to go with Hardy. I just like her wrestling and grappling upside here. I think she's a little bit more well-rounded than Horth. Horth does have the power advantage on the feet, but um, Hardy will have the volume and the quick, quicker hands, I believe. So that could cancel each other out on the feet. But like I said, I like Hardy's wrestling and top control and BJJ if this fight gets to the mat. Horse takedown defense is pretty good, but I do think Hardy can be able to get her down a couple times at least. So give me Hardy to win by decision. I know it's about to pick him right now. Um, she was the underdog. I'm looking at that line. I'm going to watch it a little bit more and see where that goes. But I like Hardy to win. Next one's going to be Wellington Terman versus Jared Gooden. Terman is 18 and 7, 27 years old, 6 foot, 72 inch reach. Gooden is 22 and 9, 29 years old, which is crazy. Uh, 6 foot with a 77 inch reach, which is also crazy. Uh, Terman's a very good grappler, very good submissions. His takedowns are a little lackluster. He does have to work for those takedowns, but if he gets his fights in the mat, he's very good. He's been working on his striking a little bit more. It has been improving. 
He does have decent power in his hands, too. Um, but he's just a little inconsistent. Um, as you've seen, two wins here, and then he lost two against two pretty decent fighters. So um, whenever he tries to make that step up, he kind of uh, underperforms, if you want to say. Jared Gooden, though, powerful striker. He can be hittable on the feet, though, um, but he always has that knockout power, one-touch knockout power. His takedown defense isn't the greatest. He can be controlled off his back. And um, he could mix in some takedowns on his own, but I don't think he's going to in this fight because he does not want to get this fight to the mat. Herman's going to have the clear advantage here. But um, for me, both these guys are too untrustworthy to bet on. I wouldn't even touch either guy here. Um, but I'm going to go with Terman. I do like his grappling upside. Like I said, I think he could weather the storm early. Uh, Gooden's power, um, not to say that it vanishes later in the rounds, but it does go away as the fight goes on. So he's very dangerous early, and it starts to wane a little bit as the fight goes on. So I think Terman can survive early on. He does have some pretty, uh, he's pretty durable on the feet. But even if he does try to mix in some takedowns, pushes up Gooden against the cage, stuff like that, I think that'll wear on Gooden and that'll help out Terman in the long run. So give me Terman to win by decision. If he does get this fight to the mat, though, he's live for a submission for sure. And Gooden's live for a knockout. So like I said, too many red flags here. I'm going to stay away. Next one's going to be Eeyore Pretoria versus Rodolfo Bellato. Uh, uh, Eeyore is 20 and 4. Let me get this out of the way. Sorry, guys. 27 years old, 6'3", 75 inch reach. And uh, Bellato is 11 and 2, 27 years old, 6'3", with a 77 and a half inch reach. So, Toria, solid striker. He's got good power in his hands. His takedown defense isn't the greatest. He can slow down as the fight goes on. He is pretty durable, though. But then there's some fights where his chin isn't durable. So, I've seen him have a very good chin in some fights and not a very good chin in some fights. But his cardio, like I said, he does fade as the as the fight goes on, especially after the first round. Uh, Bellato, though, well-rounded guy. He's got very good grappling, very good submissions for a light heavyweight. Good power in his hands as well. He's better. He's a better grappler, I would say. Um, but he does have, you know, he's got good cardio, too. He showed um pretty good uh, stand-up game in his last fight on the Dana White Contender Series about a month ago. So I'm going to go with Bellato here. I'm not the biggest Pretoria fan. I don't think he's all that great. I know he beat... Uh, Shogun, he lost to Nikolau, and he lost to Olberg, which are, these guys are, you know, killers who, who can knock you out in one punch, but, I mean, Shogun is on was on his last leg, and um, yeah, I think Bellato's good enough here, I think he's got a good enough chin to survive the early storm of Pretoria, and if he gets his fight to the mat too, Bellator should be, Bellato, Bellator, Bellato should be able to uh, outgrapple him and maybe even get a submission, so I'm gonna say Bellato does get a finish in this fight, I don't know if it's going to be like a ground and pound knockout or if it's a standing knockout. I don't know if it's going to be a submission. I would look at the props for inside the distance here. I'm going to look at that. I don't want to pay this minus 410 uh, money line for him, but I do think he wins, and I'm going to look at the props when those come out for that. Next one's going to be Steve Garcia versus Mel Costa. Garcia is 14 and 5, 31 years old, 6 foot, 73 inch reach. And Costa is 20 and 6, 27 years old, 5'10" with a 73-inch reach as well. So Garcia is pretty well-rounded, actually, but he's been, he's more so a striker. He likes to get into those brawls and swinging out, and sometimes he wins it, sometimes he doesn't. He gets um, rocked more times than not, but he is durable. He's only been knocked out once, and um, he's got good power, and he's gritty. He's one of those dogs, if you want to say, but um, I wouldn't put him in the, the label of like a dog like Darren Elkins and Clay Guida, those kind of dogs. No, he's a, he's gritty and he's tough, but he's not that kind of dog. Costa, very well-rounded as well. Very good striking, good kicks, very good grappling and submissions. Um, he looked very good in his last fight against Lingo. Lingo was more, you know, one-dimensional. I would say more so one-dimensional than Garcia is, but um, then he took this fight on short notice against Tiago Moises, and that's a tough ask for anybody. But Costa's very good. I'm very high on him, so I'm going to go with Costa here. I just think he's better everywhere. I think he's the better striker, more technical. He does have the finishing ability. The only thing that I would give maybe Garcia the edge is that grit and the, the ability to, like, brawl it out. And if Costa just doesn't engage in that brawl and gets those takedowns, which I think he can too, um, Garcia's takedown defense is pretty good. But I do think Costa could be able to do, a, like, a well-timed takedown and get the fight to the mat, and he's a very good grappler. Um, 
So to me, I think the more well-rounded guy is Costa. I think he's better everywhere. As long as he doesn't get this like a dirty fight, I think Costa should win this one. I'll say he gets the finish here as well. Don't know if it's going to be a knockout or submission. I'll lean submission route, but wouldn't be shocked if it's going to be a knockout. So give me Costa by inside the distance here. I'm going to look at that prop as well. Um, I wouldn't mind the minus 200 favorite or 200 uh, price for him for like a um, parlay. Next one's going to be Joe Selecki versus Jakar uh, Close. And Selecki is 13 and 3, 30 years old, 5'9, 70 and a half inch reach. And Close is 13, 2 and 1, 35 years old, 5'9, 70 inch reach. So Selecki is a very good grappler, as we all know, very good submissions. His takedowns are pretty good as well. His striking is low volume, but it's not terrible. He does have some power in his hands, but he's very low volume. Very like one, like one punch and done, like a right overhand and done. He doesn't even like really jab or anything like that, but very good grappler. Close, he's also well-rounded. He's more so a striker, but he's a very good wrestler. He's got good wrestling too whenever he wants to use it. He's durable, good volume, always high volume guy, pushes forward. Takedown defense is pretty good. Um, so this, to me, this is a striker versus grappler. And I know Close, like I said, he's well-rounded, but he's more so a striker, but he has that wrestling background, which is why I really like him in this fight uh, at a, as a minus 125, minus 130 favorite. I think he gets this one done. The striking advantage for Close is night and day. And I think if this fight does get to the mat, Joe Selecki sh will have the grappling edge. But Close is good enough to survive any takedowns or any submissions or anything that Selecki gets. He's not, he's not like he's a fish out of water here. But on the feet, though, I mean, I think Close is, should be able to pick him apart and win an easy decision if he can stop those takedowns. So I'm going with that. Maybe Selecki does get an early takedown in the first round, but we've seen him slow down as the fight goes on, too. So... I like close. I think he gets this one done by decision. I like the price tag. Sign me up. Next one's going to be Cody Brundage versus Zach Reese. Brundage is 9 and 5, 29 years old, 6 foot, 72 inch reach. And Reese is 6 and 0, 29 years old, 6 4, with a 74 and a half inch reach. So I'm going to try to be nice here with Cody Brundage. He does love his guillotines. Let's put it that way. He does have some decent power in his hands if he connects. But here's the bad stuff about him because there's not a lot of good. He's got terrible fight IQ. He, his cardio fades as the fight goes on. He kind of gives up as if the fight's not going his way. And he's just not, I don't think he's UFC material personally, but he's still in the UFC. Good for him. Uh, Reese, though, making his UFC debut, I think he's well-rounded. He's got good submissions off his back. He's got good grappling, solid striking with power too. Good takedown defense. The only thing that's a little red flag with me other than being uh, this is going to be his first fight in the UFC, is all of his wins, all six of them, have come in the first round very early. And to me, I want to see fighters that can go later in the fight because I don't know what he's going to look like um, after the first round if this fight gets there. But to me, I can never pick Cody Brundage. I'm sorry. I know there's some Cody Brundage lovers out there that like him a lot, and that's cool beans. I'm sure he's a great guy. But as a fighter, I cannot pick him. That it, He does not give me any um traits that i like of a ufc fighter so give me a reese here all day i'm gonna say he gets this one done by a finish probably in the first round um whether it's gonna be a submission whether it's on the feet and uh cody brunner's gonna i bet you he's gonna try at least two guillotines and he's gonna miss on both and reese is gonna capitalize and it's gonna be game over from there so uh give me reese to win first round i'll say knockout why not next one misha tate versus julia oliva Tate is 19 and 9, 37 years old, 6'5'6", six, six, with a 66 and a half inch reach. Avila, 9 and 2, 35 years old, 5'7", 69 inch reach. So Tate's solid wrestling and grappling. Her striking is okay at best. She's very hittable on the feet, but she's tough. She's durable. She always pushes, pushes forward. And she's just getting up there in age now. She's not like she used to be when, you know, she was the champion and all that good stuff. She, she's 37 years old now, so... Uh, Julia, though, solid striking. She's got good power in her hands. She can wrestle and grapple as well. But thing about with her, she's coming back from a two and a half year layoff, which is never a good thing. It's always a little red flag for me. So I'm staying far away from this fight from a betting perspective. And um, I think it's a 50 50 fight. And usually in a 50 50 fights, so you want to pick the dog. But I, I just can't pick Tate. I'm leaning Julia still. I'm going to pick her. I think on the feet, Julia is going to have a clear advantage with the power, too. She's going to land bigger shots. And uh, Tate does not take damage well on the face. You've seen her in the last couple of fights. She was beat up. And 
As long as Julia doesn't like completely death gas, I think she should win this fight. Tate's going to have to wrestle, 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 and wrestle. I don't know if she's going to be able to here. So to me, give me um, Julia to win by a decision. I think it might be a close one too. It could be a split. Like I said, stay away from this fight. There's no reason to bet this one. Next one is going to be Clay Guida versus Joaquim Silva. Guida is 38 and 23. It's crazy. 41 years old, 5'7", 70 inch reach. And Silva is 12 and 2, 34 years old, 5'8", with a 69 inch reach. So we all know who Clay Guida is. Very good wrestler, very good cardio, very good pressure and pace. He's durable. His striking, though, is not the greatest. But his game plan is Russell, 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 cardio, cardio, cardio. And the one little red flag that I don't like about Clay Guida, too, is he gets submitted a crap ton. And um, I will show you how many times he's been submitted. 11 times out of those 23 losses. So more than half of those losses have come by submission, which is a little scary whenever he's fight, fighting somebody who's a good grappler. And we have Joaquin Silva, who's a very good grappler, but he is more so a striker. He's got very powerful hands. He's durable. And um, he doesn't really shoot for takedowns, like I said, though. That's the thing. So if this fight does get to the mat, I think Silva is a good, good enough grappler to where he can get a reversal and maybe even get a submission on Guida. But I love Guida, and I really want to pick him at the price tag. He's at like plus two fifty right now, but I just think Silva's too too dangerous on the on the mat. I think he's too dangerous on the feet, and I just think eventually he's going to be able to catch Guida, whether it's going to be a submission or or a knockout on the feet. Uh, Clay Guida's going to have to be super safe and wrestle for fifteen minutes, and I just don't know if he's going to be able to do that in this fight. So, uh, give me Silva to win. I'm going to say by decision. Or maybe like a late like submission or something like that. When um maybe when Guida kind of gives his uh, neck out a little bit and gets a gu maybe Silva can get like a guillotine or something like that. So picking Silva here. Um, I'm gonna stay away though from this fight. Next one in the main card, we got Soriano versus Stotzfis. Uh Soriano is nine and three, 31 years old, 5'11, 72 and a half inch reach. And Dustin is 14 and 5, 32 years old, six foot, 75 inch reach so Suriano is a very powerful striker he's durable he's Hawaiian so it comes with the with the heritage there he's he got very good wrestling he's a good wrestler but he never uses it which is always crazy and his takedown defense is not good at all uh Stoltzfus though I just think he's one of those fighters where he doesn't do anything good but he's very below average and like average and everything at best maybe even below average at everything he's just he can mix in some takedowns he does some decent striking here and there his chin is a little suspect. So to me, give me Soriano all day here. I just think he's the better MMA fighter. I think Soriano may look like crap in the first round, but the second round hits. Stoltzfus kind of slows down a bit. Soriano has that power where he can touch him up on the chin once and it's going to be over there. So give me Soriano to win by knockout. I'll maybe look at that prop, Sor Soriano, by knockout, but I'm not going to touch minus 285 money line because I don't really trust Soriano enough to win this fight because we've seen them have some very bad game plans against some of these fights and or some of these fighters. So um, I think he gets it done, but I'm staying away. Here's going to be a very good fight. Sean Brady versus Kelvin Gastelum. Brady is 15 and 1, 31 years old, 5'10 with a 72 and a half inch reach. And Gastelum is 18 and 8, 32 years old, 5'9, 71 and a half inch reach. So Brady is a very good grappler, very good submissions. Um, solid takedowns. His striking is pretty good, but his bread and butter is he wants to get this fight to the map. He wants to get the, that grappling going. He's a very, very good grappler. Uh, Gastelum, well-rounded in his own right. Very Got good power in his hands on the feet. He's very durable. Solid wrestling and solid takedowns. His takedown defense is pretty good, too. The only thing with him, he's moving down to welterweight. He's a little inconsistent, as we've seen in the past, but I think you know, his last fight against Chris Curtis looked very good. He he stuffed um, or he was able to outstrike Chris Curtis, not stuff any takedowns. But I um, mean, that's good. And good right there for me. Um, and then it, obviously you go back to uh, Sean Brady's fight against Bilal Muhammad. And that was not a good look for Brady. I try not to look too much into that. But, um, you know, what? I like Gastelum here. I really do. I think he's going to be able to stuff the takedowns. I think um, Brady, like I said, Brady's takedowns are pretty good. But I don't think they're amazing. But if this fight gets to the mat, again, I'm going to be a little bit 
sweating the, this uh the pick but i like gastelum on the feet all day i think he's got more power i think he's the better striker i think he should be able to stuff the takedowns and sean brady kind of slows down as the fight goes on as well and uh Gastelum has that dog in him too. He like he's gritty. He's gonna push forward. He's got the durability. So I like that in the fighter. So give me Gastelum to win. I'm gonna say by decision, but it wouldn't be shocked if it's a third round knockout or something like that because uh, Bilal Muhammad's gonna be able to knock you out in the second round by a standing knockout. I think Kevin Gastelum can at least do the same. So give me Gastelum to win. I'm gonna say by decision, like I said. Another good fight here is gonna be Rob Font versus Davison Figueredo. Uh, Font is 20 and 7, 36 years old, 5'8, 71 and a half inch reach. And Figueredo is 21, 3 and 1, 35 years old, 5'5, five, five, with a 68 inch reach. So we all know who Rob Font is. I know he didn't look good in his last fight, but remember that was on short notice. Um, but he's a very good boxer. He's got an amazing jab. He's not known to be that knockout guy, but he got a knockout recently against uh, Adrian Yanez which was a very good knockout, but he has tons of, he throws tons of volume on the feet. His takedown defense isn't the greatest, but he's not going to get subbed off his back or anything like that. He's uh he's durable and he always works to get up. Figueredo, we know him. He's been a champion at the flyweight division. He's fought Moreno four times in the last three years. And uh, that's a little red flag for me. I'll bring that up in a second, but he's very well rounded himself. He's a good striker. We got good power. He's dangerous with his submissions and guillotines. He does have power in his hands, but that was that flyweight. I don't know how that's going to translate, which is a little red flag. He can slow down as the fight goes on, too. He's durable, too. But um, but with the Moreno thing, he's only fought Moreno this last three years of the U- and being in the UFC. He's fought him four times. So to me, how is he going to look against somebody who's not Moreno? And Moreno is a good boxer. So is Rob Font. So this could be a close fight, but I like Rob Font to win this fight. I think uh, F- Figueredo... I don't know. I did something about him. He's it seems to be slowing down a bit. And I think Rob Font's boxing is is good enough to get this one done. I think Figueroa is going to have to mix in some grappling. And if he doesn't, it, then I think he's going to lose his fight on the feet. But Figueroa, if he does mix in grappling, too, he does slow down a little bit quicker, too. So to me, it's pick your poison. Uh, I'm going to go with Rob Font to get this one done by decision. Like I said, he's not really the known to be the knockout guy, but the more dangerous guy here is probably Figueredo. I just don't know because he's moving up a weight class, though. So everything changes. He's not going to be a flyweight here. He may be a little bit quicker, but I think Font's a little bit more durable. I don't know if he's going to be able to knock him out or anything like that. So give me Rob Font to win. I'll say by decision. Coming main event here, Jalen Turner versus Bobby Green. Turner is 13 and 7, 28 years old, 6'3", with a 75-inch reach. Bobby Green, 31, 14 and 1, 37 years old, 5'10", 71-inch reach. So Turner's taking this fight on short notice. Like I said, it was supposed to be Dan Hooker. He's a very dangerous striker. He's got tons of power in his hands, sneaky submissions, club and subs, solid takedown defense. He's very long and tall for the division. And um, he can slow down as the fight goes on. That's something to be... Um, Something to look at, and like I said, it's going to be on short notice, so maybe it's a, he's only got about a round, a round and a half of cardio, but we'll see. And Bobby Green, high-volume striker. He's not really known to be that KO guy until his last fight. He knocked out Grant Dawson with a left jab, knocked him clean out, so crazy. But um, he's a little hittable. He can be a little bit hittable at times, too, with his hands being so low. Um, He can wrestle, too, but he just doesn't. And uh, yeah, he's just a high-volume striker with good cardio. And he's pretty durable, but lately, man, he's been hittable in his last fights, man. Jared Gordon was touching him up. Uh, Tony Ferguson was looking pretty decent against him, and he looked very good against uh, Grant Dawson. So I usually don't pick short notice fighters, but the more dangerous guy here is Jalen Turner, and I like his reach. I like his height, and I'm going to go with Jalen Turner to get this one done. I think he gets something like a club and sub in the early second round. Uh, first round might look look good for both guys. But Turner's too dangerous, and I think he's going to catch Bobby Green, and he's going to daze him a bit. And I think that guillotine is going to come right after that, and it's going to be a submission right after that. So give me Turner to win by submission, club and sub, probably like second round, or maybe even late first. Main event time, going to be a good one here too. Benil Dariush versus Armin Saruki, and Dariush is 22-5-1, and 34 years old, 5'10", 72-inch reach, and Sarukian, 23-20-3. 27 years old, 5'7", with a 72 and a half inch reach. 
So both these guys are kind of the same style of fighter. They're both well-rounded. They both have good striking. They both have good wrestling and grappling. I would say Sarukian has better wrestling. Uh, Dariush may be a little bit better on the feet, maybe a little bit better in the grappling department. But um, both guys are usually durable. They both have good cardio too. But um, I'm just go- I honestly I'm just gonna go with the youth here. I just think he's a I like his style more, and not to- and I like Dariush too. Don't get me wrong, except when he was fighting uh, Oliveira, but that was that was last fight. Oliveira's my my guy, but I like Sarukian too. I I, I think he should have beat Gamrot. I'll say that out right now. I thought he barely won. It was a close fight. The one thing I am worried about here, though, with Armin, he does make fights a little bit closer than they should be. Like in his last fight, I think he got rocked by Silva. He should have dominated. But uh, Demir, he looked very good into. But like the Gamrot fight, like that was his first big test. He, I thought he passed it, but he barely did, and he didn't get the the call the judges' way. So they thought Gamrot won, which I don't think it was right. But that's the one thing I'm worried about with here with uh, Armin if he. If he just makes this fight a little bit closer for for Dariush to maybe steal it again, because Dariush is very good. He's got good takedown defense. He's got good striking. Um, I know in his last fight against Oliveira, he didn't look like his self, if you want to say, but and it's Oliveira. That's all I'm going to say. So to me, the price tag at minus 195 isn't bad, but he's at minus 290, 295 right now. And I'm just, I'm going to stay away. I'm going to look at the over-unders here, maybe maybe see what the price is for that. But give me Armin to win. I'm going to say by decision or maybe like a third or fourth round like knockout. Maybe he catches Benil because who knows what his uh, chin's going to look like after that um, Charles Oliveira knockout because once he got head kicked, he just seemed dazed and confused and he didn't know what to do. So Maybe it only takes one shot for Armin. We've seen Armin get dropped and go right back up. So um, give me a uh, Saruki and win by decision. That's all That's all I'm going to say. This is going to be a very close fight. But all right, guys, I know this is a little bit quicker. This is about 27 minutes. I tried to get it about uh, 25 minutes. I was a little, little short there. But uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. As always, please hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy this video or if you just haven't yet. Leave some comments below. Uh, our live shows this week will be Thursday night and before the fights on Saturday. I, I believe it's going to be on uh, Cody Blood Money MMA Bets channel on Thursday. I could be wrong. So, like I said, check out the notifications. Follow us on, face, on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You'll, you'll be notified when those videos come out. Appreciate you guys for watching, as always. And until next time, happy